Hi everyone, my name is Samer Forsley. I'm the CEO of Simitech Multimedia. I wanted to spend some time today uh, to talk about the learning pyramid as it applies to uh, manufacturing and electrical maintenance staff. I saw recently on LinkedIn uh, the pyramid displayed that showed different retention rates based on the type of learning that uh, an individual may actually undertake. And in a way, we thought the pyramid looks great, uh, but in reality, it applies a bit different in manufacturing. And we had a discussion here internally and thought we should split it maybe different. So we can categorize these, uh, these uh, learning um, methods in four ways. The first one is traditional learning. The second one is demonstration. Then there is practice and finally teaching. And what I'm going to do today is uh, spend a minute talking about each one of those and how it applies and how we hear our customers uh, give us feedback on different topics. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is traditional learning. So that is sending someone for a course at a college or sitting in a lecture somewhere and hearing someone give you uh, instruction on different topics. Uh, that, according to the research, uh, usually we retain about 5% of that. Uh, the second method of learning is giving a book. So you read a book on different um, things, whether it's uh, motors or troubleshooting them or any concept really. And um, the research is showing that about 10% of what you learn, you actually retain. And lastly, it's audiovisual. So that's watching video, looking at material online, and that retains about 20%. So collectively, those three, you can combine them together in like some type of e-learning and you can get to about 20% retention by the time you're done. The benefit of all that stuff is you have the reference material, you can always go back to it, you can always check it, you can highlight, you can take notes, so that's a really beneficial way. And for some people, that's a really great way of learning. Now, in manufacturing, especially when it comes to maintenance staff, uh, what we hear from our customers is that they have maybe one or two hours a week to train a maintenance professional to become proficient at what they're doing. And so within one or two hours, it's really not possible to send them to a one week or one two day class or they can't retain much. They come back with a booklet but they don't really know what to do with it. Uh, but also when it comes to books, same thing, they don't necessarily have the time to sit and focus and consume all that content. And so they lean towards the e-learning uh, type um, learning and that's, that's great and that gives them the baseline they need and gets them to about that 20% uh, retention rate. The second portion or the second step in this pyramid in terms of retention is the whole idea of demonstration and discussion. So here we're going to call it the whole show and tell uh, piece. And so by that, uh, we see it on the factory floor um, with a seasoned professional doing the buddy system where they are walking and showing a junior how to troubleshoot or how to fix things and sh a showing by demonstration, but maybe also having a discussion. Uh, it is a great way to learn, especially if you add some e-learning to it. So you come with some background uh, theory at least, and then you now start by looking and observing somebody demonstrating. Uh, learning how things are working. Uh, it is a good way of increasing retention. It comes with some issues. It comes with issues in terms of A, uh, it doesn't scale because you have your resources doubled up everywhere you go learning, and but also it doesn't scale because it doesn't give that consistent uh, troubleshooting across all the different plants or the different locations. But it also comes with issues in terms that sometimes we hear that the buddy is teaching some bad habits, they're cutting corners and not following steps. So while overall it's a great way of increasing retention, it does still have some limitations. The next step in this retention pyramid is the whole area or idea of practice. Uh, that's an area of knowledge that is very familiar and near and dear to our heart. Uh, and that's the whole concept of taking what you've learned, whether you've heard it from a buddy or through demonstration or you read it in a book or saw it through a video online and applying it somewhere. Now, in a factory floor, uh, having that practice happen on live equipment is not possible. Sometimes it's dangerous, uh, but it's also not feasible because the lines are running and you don't want to be messing around with them when you, you don't have to. Uh, that's where simulation training comes into play and simulation allows you to a scale training across the board and allow people to practice over and over again and practice different scenarios that not necessarily just the everyday thing I'm going to see, but the weird stuff that happens once in a while so that when you when you see it, you're able to quickly diagnose what you're uh, observing and fix it. And so uh, the next layer in terms of retention is practice, and we've all heard practice makes perfect. You need a medium for that, and simulation is a good way of actually getting that done. So we saw that to this point that with some traditional learning uh, and some demonstration, uh, with some practice, you can get somebody to up to 75% retention. The last step in this process is teaching. Now, teaching gets you to about 90% retention, but that's hard to do for most people. The irony of all of this is that if you look at what we talked about a second ago, the buddy system, the person teaching 
is the one getting the most retention and value out of it. And so the person receiving the information is getting far less out of it than the person teaching. So how do we get around that? The best way to do is to assemble all of that together in a sequence. So you get some basic learning followed by some demonstration and get some simulation and practice. And when you're done, take that new recruit or that apprentice and then get them to teach that concept to somebody else. So make them the next person in the buddy system where when there's a new employee coming on board, don't let somebody who's seasoned actually do the learning. Get somebody who's just finished the practice through the simulation to actually teach these concepts. There isn't one way uh, to teach somebody something. People consume learning different ways. Some people will benefit greatly from your learning. Some people will benefit more from simulation. Some people will benefit only from demonstration, right? But the best way to actually do it is to provide the whole envelope for training. And in this way, depending on who the employee is and what actually or how they consume uh, learning and retain it, they have the tools they need. So best thing is to assemble it all in a sequence, from e-learning to demonstration, then practice, then teaching. This way you have the employees on board and ready to join the factory floor and be productive much faster than if you just gave them one tool. Uh, for more information, please go to our website, simutechmultimedia.com. My email is samer at simutechmultimedia.com. I would love to chat with you about this topic. It's a topic that I've been doing a lot of reading on, and uh, please reach out, and I uh, look forward to hearing from you.